Eric Darling here with Darling Data, for as long as you'll have me. Uh, <clears throat> I want to talk today a little bit, despite the fact that I'm desperately in need of a haircut, and I can't get one for like two weeks, and I don't want you to have to wait two weeks to learn about SQL Server stuff. Uh, I want to talk today a little bit about um, nested loops, specifically parallel nested loops, and the perils of recursive common table expressions. And <clears throat> now it, you don't need specifically a, a recursive common table expression to see kind of performance stuff I'm going to talk about, but uh, they do make a rather clever foil in that regard. And um, well, I, had, I, I answered a question recently about them on uh, the database administrators stack exchange which kind of inspired this whole thing. So now I'm going to share all that stuff with you and I'll, I'll have a link to the question, uh, the video and blog post for this whole thing. So first let's look at a typical recursive common table expression plan. So usually uh, when you use a recursive common table expression, uh, the recursive part of the query, and in this case, that's most of the query, uh, most of the query plan, rather, uh, you are not eligible <coughs> for parallelism in here. Uh, SQL Server just doesn't go for it. Um, it will cause a parallel zone in your query plan, and also is like, you know, uh, sort of an aside. Uh, I believe batch mode is also ineligible for the inner side of recursive common table expression plan, which kind of makes sense because there's really not a lot of operators in here that are eligible for batch mode anyway. There's nested loops, joins, spools, and I suppose compute scalars are, and I think concatenation is too, but like what's the point of doing that, right? Not, not a lot of it. Now, uh, you can use cross-apply sometimes in some ways to change that. Right? So this query here, we're, we're cross-applying, but SQL Server still chooses a, a single threaded execution plan. For this one down here, where we do things a little bit differently, rather than looking for just a single post ID. Now remember, the ID table, or sorry, the ID column in the post table is a clustered primary key on there. So looking for one value means one row is going to come out of it. This is a particularly interesting value because <clears throat> it actually has a lot of answers and comments associated with it. So if I tried to run this for real, it would run for a long time. Uh, and the, it would fail be, without the max recursion zero hint. So um, a lot of fun background there, right? Oh, Life-changing stuff. This version of the query, though, uh, in this version of the query, we are looking for, and I don't know why IntelliSense is crapping all over this thing and telling me that the post table doesn't exist and let's get rid of that. I don't, I don't need, I don't need your IntelliSense today anyway. Uh, these objects clearly exist. <laughs> it's not like the video where I was telling you to maybe pretend to select from an object that doesn't exist so that you don't cache query plans, but uh, whatever. This query changes a little bit. And the reason, we're going to talk about why in a minute, but and we're also going to talk about uh, a little bit about parallel nested loops because a lot of stuff about them that a lot of people kind of don't understand. This whole query now is eligible for parallelism. And uh, there are some rules and some reasons and some things to watch out for. So let's hide those. I want to ruin the, ruin the big surprise. I'm going to scroll up here a little bit where I've, I've written some things about parallel nested loops uh, that you should know. And... Uh, there we go. That's a, that's a bit better on the zoom. I would just have to move this so my big head isn't covering up anything important. And uh, let's talk a little bit about parallel nested loops. Uh, it's only chosen for the inner side <clears throat> when the outer side has a one row guarantee. So like uh, in the function that I was running, where even when I was searching for uh, owner user ID 22656, which has about 28,000 rows associated with it, what we're passing into the uh, inline table valued function that locates a post to look for is the ID of the table, right? It's again, the, the clustered primary key on the table. So even though 
27,000 rows will be taken and looped, or 28,000 rows will eventually be taken and looped, uh, what SQL Server cares about is that what we're finding each time we do that loop has a one row guarantee. And that, that join, or that rather that correlation on the cluster primary key of the post table is what gives it that. The cost reduction stuff uh, doesn't consider the inner side of the nested loops join when it, SQL Server is figuring out if it's going to give you a parallel plan or not. It only cares about making the outer part of the nested loops cheaper. And coming back over here, what I mean by that is that only this, this is all SQL Server cares about. If uh, SQL Server thought that it wouldn't be any harder using a, or wouldn't be any more costly using a single threaded execution plan, then it would have chosen a serial plan again, like we saw in the other ones. The parallel plan for this has an estimated subtree cost of 135 query bucks and change. Uh, and SQL Server thought this was a cheaper option than uh, scanning the post table using a single thread. So none of this stuff on this side of the nested, of, uh, nested loops join is considered when costing uh, a query for parallelism because, get ready for this because this is a wild one, What's running in here in parallel is not exactly parallel. It's running dot copies of the same query across dot threads, and each thing is sort of like a serial plan inside running individually, which conceptually is kind of like what happens with like uh, other parallel plan plan types, other parallel join types, rather like like hash joins and merge joins and stuff like that. But you should, parallel merge joins were a mistake and we're not going to talk about those in Sully this fine video. So all that out of the way, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the setup for the, the query plans that we're about to look at and the, and the function that, are, that they use. Uh, and then I'm going to show you why parallel nested loops joins can be just terrifically sensitive to uh, parallel skew. And by parallel skew, I mean how many rows end up on each thread and a neat way that you can fix those issues if you are having those issues. So uh, we have a couple uh, indexes here to help our demo along. We have one on the post table and one on the comments table. Uh, the columns in use here make total sense for what the query, the, what the function is doing. Uh, the function here, here's the uh, anchor part of the recursive common table expression where we look up a single post ID and I have littered this function with force sequence because SQL Server, despite my fantastic indexes, was choosing to take those indexes and build nearly identical indexes from them using an eager index pool which was making everything terrifically slow. So lesson one, uh, if you have a good index on your table and SQL Server is making an eager index pool from that index, use a force secant, make your life easy. Um, I have had a lot of instances lately helping clients out where uh, SQL Server was choosing daft execution plans and force secants were quite useful in, in addressing those issues. Uh, now down here in the, uh, well, you have the anchor and then the hierarchy building part of your common table expression. There's, there's a word for it that's slipping my mind right now. Maybe I should have done some research before I, before I started yakking away. Uh, so here's where we go find, um, here's where we go find things in the post table. Uh, so like what we found up top was an answer, right? Because that's the clustered primary keys, finds that, finds an answer that we care about. Uh, and then in here is where we find questions, or rather answers to the question. And then down here is where we find comments on the question or answer. Right? So we find all the stuff that we can in here, and then we select stuff out of the, uh, out of the, recur out of the recursive common table expression. This is still inside the function. And then here are a couple queries that demonstrate really well what I meant by uh, parallel nested loops being very sensitive to uh, skew. So I'm gonna make sure that I hit R and not E so I don't try to run this whole demo file over again. And we're gonna look at <coughs> uh, a couple portions of these query plans. Now, 
Notice that the only difference between these two queries is here we just do a straight select from cross apply where p.creation date is greater than or equal to 2013.03.06. And in here, we have a select count from, and then we have a top in here with a big top number so that we don't have to worry about maybe not getting enough rows back, right? We definitely have fewer than 2.1 billion rows in the table. And then we cross apply to the hierarchy function uh, outside of that, right? So uh, this top query takes just about a full minute to run. If we look at the final operator in the query plan, uh, that's 58.443 milliseconds. And there's not like a lot of weird mumbo jumbo in here where SQL Server messes up query operator times because it does that quite a bit too. Uh, but really what's important here is when we, if we right click on this, that little line, and we look at the actual number of rows for all executions, we are going to see quite a bit of skew here, right? Like all these rows, let me actually clear that out. Let's just highlight the whole thing. Uh, some rows like here and here and here end up with a lot more rows on them than other threads like, uh, well, okay, stay pink, uh, U and U and U and U. So the way that SQL Server figures uh, which rows are going to go on which thread uh, is it uses some like modulus-ish math uh, and this thing called the parallel page supplier starts dividing rows up uh, depending on uh, you know, how many threads are involved and, uh, you know, like how many rows and other stuff, those things get split up. And you hope that they end up getting split up evenly, but that doesn't always happen the way things that the values that come out of the table end up hashing out. If you have like values that are really like all even, then like, like, then like whatever like modulus value for the odd numbers are going to be screwed, right? Because they're not going to find anything. You could end up with like million rows, zero rows, million rows, zero rows, million rows, zero rows for all the threads in your query, which would be a bad situation like this. This is, this is nearly as bad a situation, uh, just not with one with million zero. It's just pretty close with 1.4 million, 1.4 million, 1.6 million, and then a bunch of other that have like 10, uh, 12, 10 to 12,000 rows on each thread. So that's a bad time, and this query ends up running for a full, well, just about a full minute. We can call it a full minute. I feel, feel like it's a full minute. It felt like a full minute of my life anyway. And then we have this query down here, which finishes twice as fast. The final timing on this is just about 30 seconds, close enough to 30 seconds for me anyway. And if it's close enough for me, then it's close enough. And the reason why is because, and I wish this thing would stop jumping around and reframing, it's pretty annoying. When we have a top in a query, that top under most circumstances, unless it's on the inner side of a nested loops join, uh, that top will force a serial zone in your query plan. It not, does not force the whole query to be serial, which is the way the crappy Microsoft documentation about parallelism makes it sound. Uh, it just, for, which I've had like three or four people be confused about that in my, in, like in recent memory. So uh, it's just badly documented. So it forces a serial zone in the plan up here. But because the overall plan is parallel, right? So like this is all parallel and this is all parallel and all this is obviously parallel. We know that because we have our fun little racing stripes here. SQL Server needs to split those rows back out after the parallel zone, All right? So if we, oh boy, this reef, this SMS is really, really fighting me today. So it, what SQL Server does to do that is it has to distribute streams. So we have a parallel scan, we have a gather streams, and then we have a distribute streams because this top has no racing stripes. Slow top, right? Single threaded top. I'm mean, not saying it's slow, it's 750 milliseconds. Who cares? Uh, but what this distribute streams operator forces us to do is redistribute those rows. And what a distribute streams operator gives us the opportunity to do is distribute those rows evenly. So, boy, you're a real jerk. So if we look at this and we go to the properties and we look at the actual number of rows, 
the same thing happened here, right? These numbers are all, all over the place. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they're definitely all over the place. But if we look at the row distribution, after that distribute streams going into the nested loops join, these are all very, very even, right? right? We have 2, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, and then 2, 4, 2. So we have a much better balance of, of rows on our parallel threads because of that. So uh, because I've talked long enough and uh, because I have a dinner reservation soon and I want to go eat, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day for various reasons. I've been very busy. I know. I don't look like the, the type of person who skips meals, but dinner is the most important drink of the day. <laughs> yeah. I thought breakfast was the most important meal of the day. I don't know. One of those things. Um, I'm sure, uh, maybe I'll write an article about what the most important drink of the day is for Beer Gut Magazine. See what happens there. So anyway, uh, <laughs> recursive common table expressions kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, they can be very slow because oftentimes queries aren't written in a way where they can engage a parallel plan. And even when they do engage a parallel plan, you have to be very, very careful about how that parallel plan is written because you could end up in a situation with incredibly skewed uh, rows across parallel threads, making your query very slow. In this case, it's a 30 second versus full minute query, and I will take 30 seconds over 60 seconds when query tuning any day. So, with that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. hope you enjoyed yourselves. If you like SQL Server performance tuning content like this for free from young, handsome men who need haircuts, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, well, give it the old thumbs up because that's pretty much the only thing that brings me joy these days, especially before I've had the most important drink of the day. So uh, I'm going to get going now. Thank you for watching. And um, I don't know. I hope, I hope you also enjoy your most important drink of the day, too, if you're the type of person who partakes in important drinks. So thank you.